My name is Om Prakash Sood, known as Omi Sood. I'm here to do an interview for Colorful Heritage. My mother is uh, one of the main reasons we came here. My mother is Kenyan born. My, my mother's uh, dad brought my mom to India to marry her off. He married, my father married uh, my mom there in India and a couple of years of, uh, in fact, three years, three years of uh, marriage in India, my father found uh, it was quite hard to make a living at that particular time in India. So my mother persuaded him to go to Kenya and we settled in Kenya and for six years I had also settled in Kenya. I have an older sister and uh, myself, we were the old two who traveled with my mother to, from India to Kenya and my other two brothers were born in Kenya. I traveled on my mother's passport, so I've never had an Indian passport. Father stayed in Kenya working in the British Army stores. But we had come back to India and he stayed there and for five years we were separated from our father while he was working in the British Army stores in Kenya. So he, then he came back to India, he started a business. He found it a little bit of a struggle, tried to maintain that business. And then again, my mother persuaded my dad, I think we should leave India and go to UK. We knew somebody who lived in Scotland. So my father made that connection and told him, look, we were going to come to you and stay there with you for a few days or whatever until we find our own place. My mother persuaded my father to go to UK. So it was myself and my dad who came here first. And we came here and it was nine months later, my mother and my other brothers and sisters who came here. I'd only been in this country, I think about five or six days. And the, the person we, whose, whose place we arrived at when we initially came here, we went to see them. I think my, my father went to see them to thank you them. And they had a small warehouse in Gorbals. So we went there and there was a lady in presence there. She was a customer, I believe, in the uh, cash and carry. And uh, she said to me, haven't seen you before. When did you come? And uh, I think I understood what she said. I grasped those words from her and I didn't re reply anything. And I went away to one side of the warehouse and I worked it out how I'm going to reply her. So about five minutes later, I came back towards her and I said to her, I came tomorrow. And everybody looked at me. <laughs> I think they knew what they meant. <laughs> I meant yesterday. <laughs> Having lived in India for the last five years and Kenya before that, Kenya we used to learn some English. By the time I got to India, we were learning mostly Hindi and Punjabi. I've forgotten most of the English. Now we have arrived here and I go to school. Strange place the school I thought it was, especially in the English geography and history classes because they were all taught in English. The only bits I could understand were maths and art. Great. Teacher was saying things in a class, like in an English class, and nothing was going in. If all I could go in was the noise. In one ear, out the other ear. F funny enough, I was good at maths. And I was good at art done very well on those two subjects. I only went to school for about two and a half years and they, then they told me it was time for you to leave school. I had uh, no education to go to college. I had no education to go to university. Well, after uh, having gone to school for two and a half years, uh, my father came home one day and says, uh, look, uh, now your schooling's over. 
I think have you, you have probably seen this uh, ad in the papers. The shipyard were looking for some apprentices. Uh, I said, fine. He says, you should take up some sort of trade. And I, I had no choice. I went along with it. So I went into the shipyard, done an interview for an apprenticeship. And they accepted me. And uh, the only thing I was poor was the English. But I had an understanding of doing things. If I was short something once, I could manage it. Not, it wasn't a problem. So I went into a shipyard and did mechanical engineering. And I became a ship's fitter. Fitting ship's engines, generators, pipes, steering gear, etc., etc. So I served my time as a mechanical engineer for four and a half years. And I became a tradesman. And I was the only Indian uh, that I can remember who was in the shipyard. There were no other colored people there at all. Right? And uh, even some of the workers in the shipyard were surprised that I took upon that uh, kind of work. That they had never seen any other uh, Asian trainman in the shipbuilding. Uh, I think I was probably the first. While I was still working in the shipyard, I decided uh, that uh, I should do something else on the side. I'd, I'd seen some people doing markets. I said, I, I'll try my hand on that. So we started to do some markets at the, on, 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 on weekends. Like Saturday and Sunday, I'd go to either Barrowland. I only went to Barrowland for a uh, short period of time. I decided to go to Ingleston Market or Wishaw Market and a Falkirk Market selling t-shirts and sweatshirts. I think the markets were started around about 78, uh, 1978 and I lasted till about uh, 1982. And then uh, in 1981 we decided while I was still doing the markets we should buy a shop. So my two brothers Right? And myself, we decided between us, we should buy a shop and we bought a shop, shop in Dalmuir. Well, and, and then in 1983, I left the shipyards to concentrate on the shops. To use the word entrepreneur or myself would be wrong. Right? But, you know, okay, we have done well in life, right? Uh, reasonably well. But I, won't, I, I wouldn't say that we were entrepreneurs. I think entrepreneur is uh, something our kids might end up to be because they have understood uh, how this uh, uh, country works better economically, how they apply themselves to this country uh, in a business sense. Whereas we only knew buy, sell, come home, rest, eat, sleep. Buy, sell, come home, eat, rest, sleep. We had nothing else going really. but. Uh, in saying that, I do thank the Scottish way of life in a big way because it's given us the opportunity to even do that. My kids are all born here and they consider themselves to be more Scots than India. I myself became a committee member of the Hindu Mandir, in which uh, I served the best I could for about 16, 17 years. And my wife was greatly involved in the Hindu mandir as well. My wife uh, had an A-level Hindi, uh, which came in very handy because she was teaching Hindi classes in the temples to uh, Indian children who wanted to learn Hindi. And uh, they, believe me, there were very many who did want to learn. And she did that for almost 25 years. And uh, I would take my kids to the temple to keep their culture and religious heritage going, which was uh, which we, which we, we believe it was a right thing to do, and uh, and I'm also glad that we have done that now. My children do value Hinduism, and they also value all the Christian beliefs, and they've 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 been enriched with both cultures. The reaction of the uh, majority of the local communities, 
seeing us Indians being here, I think they were uh, they were they were somewhat uh, curious and also delightfully surprised. I mean, a Hindu woman would go, go to the temple on Sunday and they would dress up in Indian clothes. And you see the communities looking upon them in a very curious manner, in a very delightful manner at the same time. And, uh, you know, very vibrant curls were worn by our uh, uh, Indian woman especially. And uh, you, you, you could see that, that they saw something culturally new. And... Uh, they, they weren't in any way bad towards us. In fact, they were very curious towards us. And I think they were, they were very appreciative of the fact that this, this culture was also existing in Glasgow alongside them. It was only about uh, two weeks into a been here. Having lived in Kenya, having lived in India, and I arrived here in Glasgow, and uh, just joined school. It was about uh, quarter of nine in the morning, and school dash was only about ten minutes away. And uh, I came downstairs. The room we had rented was on the second uh, second floor in the building, in a tenement building. And uh, so I came downstairs, and I'm coming out of the closed mouth. It closes never used to have doors on them in those days, in the sixties. I came down the close and I stood in the close because somebody was throwing some rubbish down. I thought somebody was throwing some ash down from the window above. I stood in the close, I didn't want to be covered in the ash. I stood for a minute, then I stood for two minutes. I was waiting for the ash to stop dropping down. Five minutes went down. Then I, people were walking by and the ash was dropping on them. I was saying to myself, what oh, a lot of silly people. More people were going down and ash was dropping onto them. I hadn't realized until I got to closer to the closer and closer to the front of the close, there was snow coming down. I'd never seen snow. So I stepped outside, I put my hand out and the snowflakes came on. Then I realized this is called snow. I didn't know that. <laughs>